Productions here at the Filson Historical Society and welcome to uh, another edition of Collection Reflections. Uh, I'm standing here actually between two of our wonderful portraits, Susanna Smith Preston on my right and Major William Preston on my left. Mother and son. It's nice when our family groups come together. Uh, Susanna Smith Preston, this was uh, painted, we believe, by John Wollaston, who was working along the East Coast uh, and got centered down in Charleston, but uh, painted uh, probably about 1760, probably shortly just before her marriage to Colonel William Preston. And uh, she bore 11 children, and William Preston was number five. And so they lived on the frontier uh, uh, in the Valley of Virginia, Bottentock County, down towards Roanoke, uh, Blacksburg, Virginia. Smithfield was a major Preston home. Uh, John Wollaston, when this portrait first came to us, uh, it was attributed to Jeremiah Teus, uh, who was a famous painter, mostly down in Charleston. And uh, Estelle Pennington, the art historian, change the attribution to John Wollaston. And that does make sense since he was operating more in the area of that. Uh, but Susanna Smith Preston uh, died at Smithfield there in, there in Virginia. And her son, major property owner, made, uh, Colonel William Preston, uh, owned huge tracts of land in Kentucky. And William Preston eventually came to Kentucky, but he joined the army first. And it was while in the army that he met William Clark and Meriwether Lewis. And so this is our connection that we talked about previously with William Clark and Meriwether Lewis. He becomes one of their fellow comrades in arms and friends. He moves after the War of 1812, he and his family, he married Caroline Hancock. William Clark married Julia Hancock. So not only are they friends and comrades in arms, but they're also brothers-in-law. And so they're good friends. He moves to Louisville to help really get ahead, always looking to speculate in land. Uh, this is another Joseph Bush portrait. Uh, you can see certain similarities. It's a very, very finely executed portrait. Uh, probably painted no earlier than 1820-ish or so. Uh, William Preston died on a trip back to Montgomery County, Virginia in January of 1821. And so this was either painted shortly before then. He was born in 1770. If you look at that portrait, you know, he's, he's not an old man. He's probably no older than in his 40s tops. Uh, perhaps Bush helped him out in the way he looked. We do know that Joseph Bush also painted Caroline Hancock Preston. We do not have her portrait here, unfortunately, but she's a more mature woman in that portrait, and we think that probably was painted in the 1830s. So this might be actually a posthumous portrait in which they ask him to execute the major some 15 or more years after he had passed away. But he, as I mentioned, was a friend, uh, he is, as you can see in this portrait, a little on the portly side. Uh, a Samama image of him also depicts him as being rather portly. And we know from written evidence that it is accurate in showing his girth because William Clark, in a letter to his brother Jonathan, tells him to tell their friend William Preston to bring his fat sides over to St. Louis for a visit. So we know that this is a pretty accurate little double chin and all. Uh, but it's a very, very fine Bush portrait of somebody, of course, here in the Louisville and Kentucky uh, with that Preston name uh, that looms very large in our, in our history and in many place names we have today. Now, Meriwether Lewis's name has cropped up several times. And being mutual friends, we have, very fortunate to have in our collection, Two letters written by Meriwether Lewis to William Preston. This is an expedition date letter, May 3rd, 1804, written from St. Louis before they started up the Missouri. And you can see in this letter the very bold signature 
of Meriwether Lewis. He's in the 1st U.S. Infantry. He's a captain, of course. And as you can see down at the bottom, to their friend, Major William Preston. William Clark actually writes a letter about, this is a letter of introduction for Pierre Chouteau, who is leading an expedition of Osage Indians to uh, Washington. And here you can see, the, these are called stampless covers because they didn't actually have stamps and they used the paper they wrote on to create the envelope for it, so to speak. So you can see this, and then it's docketed by Preston at the top, which sometimes help identify the writer and the date if uh, it isn't clear from the letter itself. Now this is a very standard routine letter, again, a letter of introduction, but the letter that Meriwether Lewis writes his friend William Preston on July 25th, 1808 is a real stunner. Uh, it's seven pages long, as you can see, and I'm holding multiple pages. Uh, this is all in Meriwether Lewis's hand. And here you can see, again, that signature. And Meriwether Lewis has only been in St. Louis a few months, taking over as governor of Louisiana Territory. And it was a big job. And he had troubles. And, but in this letter, everything is wonderful. He talks about land, business, romance, and uh, it's a very, very high content, excellent letter that reveals a lot about Lewis as he is starting a chapter of his life in St. Louis in 1808, and of course, which tragically ends not much more than a year later in 1809 in the backwoods of Tennessee. So another nice confluence of, of people and events between William Preston, Meriwether Lewis, and their mutual friend, and for Preston, family member, William Clark. That's it for this collection reflection, and we look forward to having you join us for another one.